never got there. According to my research, some people say she did. I didn't find any anything. And a woman has last year wrote a play which we're going to produce in San Francisco in August, um, yeah. where she he sh this young woman, the playwright. Uh, has a, sets the play in the desert where Donna Gracia, knowing that she's only got a few years left to live, said, I'm going to get to Tiberius. I want to die in Tiberius. I want to be buried in the holiest ground you know, that I can. And I, Tiberius is where she's chosen. And uh, she's just about on her way from Istanbul overland on a, des on a camel train to get there. And of course, the Bedouin attack her in this play. We don't oh, know. Don't know. Yeah, we okay. don't know this for sure. Okay. This is the way the play Historic goes. Okay. But the play is very clever because the play is a dialogue then between Donna Gracia and uh, a god uh, saying, Look, I spent my life doing all the things for you. You know, I've my mission oriented I, I life. I've saved the Jews. I've saved, the the Jews, I've I've saved tried here. To yeah, right. in Israel. And all I want is to get there. And you're telling me that I'm going to have to die on the way. Uh, and yeah, the yeah. play is the, you know, if she has managed to get the better of kings and popes and emperors, can she then get the better of God and change his mind? Okay, now, Andrew, uh, Ms. Brooks, you've been a writer for the New York Times for 18 years. You've written some award winning books. Um, the uh, story of Donna Grecia Nasi is certainly one of them. And uh, now I hear um, that you are starting to produce a play. Tell us about that. Well, uh, it's not my play. Uh, it will be produced by them. It won't be produced by me, and it was not written by me. But I thought that the idea of this play was just brilliant, and it's beautiful. So I'd like to see her as a movie. Okay. I mean, that are you I'm going to co-produce? Are you going to like because you have no, to no, I, I won't co-produce. But I'm going out to LA in a few weeks, and I am trying to interest somebody in producing a movie. I've been doing that for a, a few years now. Well, good for you. Not, wow. not, not, not so far. But I mean, it's got such exciting things. She falls in love at one point in Antwerp, which where she's a widow right. with her brother-in-law, and she's not supposed to because the brother-in-law is pledged to her sister and. You know, yes, you yes. can see an affair going on. So there's, there's, there's love interest, there is an escape where Cosimo de' Medici thinks she's one of the greatest bankers of the period and tries to get him, her to come to Florence when she's fleeing Antwerp. And she says, no, you know, go away. I'm going to go, you know, my mission and my people are more important than coming and living a beautiful life in Florence. So there's, it, it's a fabulous story with, you know, wonderful visuals. And I'm, I am trying to get a movie. I mean, they must Use you as a resource um, for the well, we'll pertinent see. facts. We'll and, see. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Oh, okay. Um, well, that, that's really fascinating. Um, the story of Donna Grecia Nasi, the the woman that defied kings, um, accurately described as the Moses of the Renaissance, international banker, and she uh, saved many uh, thousands of Jewish lives during the Inquisition. Before we sign off here, I'm not sure that everybody really understands exactly what the Inquisition is. Can you give um, a little definition? A quick one, yes. The Inquisition was a regulatory arm of the Catholic Church, which was set up uh, ostensibly to make sure that Catholicism was being followed according to the book. They were okay. sincere and uh, um, observant Catholics. Actually, its real mission was ethnic cleansing. Hmm. It was there to get the Jews that had been forcibly converted accuse them of not being sincere, and then put, throwing them in jail, taking away their assets, so the church got a lot of money out of it, and um, burning them if, if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all over the Catholic world. It wasn't just in Spain. OK, now um, just uh, in the last minute that we have, uh, who were some of the um, great people that she uh, played with, played ball with, that were friends with, that she associated with during her life. I know the monarch of Europe, monarchs of Europe, was certainly yeah, the, one the of the categories. great monarchs of Europe, um, and that's where we found the papers because you couldn't easily find papers on her. I mean, there was no nice, neat little file with a ribbon on it saying Donna Gracia Nasi. We had to go all over the place, including the Vatican, which was as unhelpful uh, as we know it is uh, in yeah, terms so of this. The, sort the uh, Sultan of Suleiman, um, uh, right? The Sultan was Sul Suleiman, uh, the uh, Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, Kath uh, uh, Diane de Poitiers, who many Americans may not know, was the most famous mistress of the King of France. And they had a lot of correspondence. I thought they'd have a lot in common, the two women, powerful political women. Uh, but Diane de Poitiers doesn't like Jews, or even oh. quasi, or you know, discreet Jews. And she's going to get every nickel she can out of Donna Gracia when Donna Gracia goes to her for some favors. I was surprised about that. Huh. And she knew uh, Marie, Queen of Hungary, who was the regent of the Netherlands. 
um, she knew them all. She was Zelig. She she had interacted. If she didn't, I wouldn't have had any papers. I see. I got you. We are talking with Miss Andre Brooks, fabulous author. Uh, the story is, of course, Donna Grecia Nasi, the woman that defied kings, the Moses of the Renaissance. Such a pleasure speaking with Ms. Andre Brooks, author of this fabulous book. Shalom. Together, now together, see?